be so thankful for your goodness. We can be so thankful, Father, that we can come together and we can praise you. That we can come together and we can worship you. And this morning, God, we just invite your presence, God. This morning, God, we come together and we ask you to make this house a house of miracles, Father. A house where it's overflowing with your presence. A house where demons tremble, God. A house where chains break. A house where we experience your love, your freedom in this place, God. So we just invite you this morning. We invite your presence. Just come and have your way, God.
praise God thank you Jesus that you are worthy of all our worship God and this morning God we just want to offer it all to you God this morning we want to worship you Jesus in spirit and in truth God we want to worship you with everything that we have God because you deserve it all you are worthy of it all God you are worthy of that and so much more God so this morning, God, we just want to worship you. Because you're worthy of it all. You are. You're worthy of it all. Who for from you are all things. And to you are all things. You deserve. Just lift up your voices. Just pour it all out to him. You are, you are worthy of it all. Yes, you are, yes, you are. You are worthy of it all. For from you, for from you are all things. And to you are all things. Oh, you deserve the glory. Let's declare it one last time. You worthy, you worthy of it all. Yes, you are. You worthy of it all. Oh, for from you are all things, and to you are all things. Oh, you deserve all the glory, God. Father God, I just thank you for the honor it is to be in your presence this morning. I just feel so privileged that we can stand with you this morning, that it's, you're, so, you're so amazing, you're so awesome, you're just so holy, and the fact that you are in our presence is just an honor this morning, God. We thank you for everything you've done in our lives, thank you for everything you're doing in the world. We just, we just, God, we just trust you with things going on in our situations, God. We just trust you with things going on around the world right now that that sometimes we don't understand, sometimes we're confused, but we can trust that you understand, that you have a plan, that you know what's going on, that you love your people. And I pray that we know that now, that we are loved, that we're loved by a God, that we're worthy to stand in your presence, that we can come to you boldly, that we don't have to feel like we aren't accepted, we don't have to feel like we aren't loved because you do love us. Thank you, Jesus, that you have done those things. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. What an amazing time of worship, guys. Why don't you say hello to the person next to you or someone around you, maybe someone you've not said hello to before, someone you've not spoken to in a while. Maybe there's someone you've never met. Say your name. Wow. I'm sure I could leave you guys talking all day, um, which I happily would do, but they told me I need to speak at some point. So here I am. What an amazing time of worship that was, guys. I don't know about you, but I just I felt God's presence so heavy this morning. That on it, like, I just feel privileged that we could be here. 
and welcome to week three of Movie March. It's been amazing so far, and we still have two more weeks to go. It's not over yet. I hope you've got some popcorn. If you haven't, go and find some, steal from the person next to you, eat bits that have fallen on the floor. There's no judgment here. You're all good. If you picked um, sweet popcorn, who knows if we can be friends. If you picked salted, I'm on your team. Good choice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Ben. I am not one of the youth. I'm actually the youth leader. Um, you might see me hanging out with the youth, standing with the youth, jumping with the youth. I'm meant to be leading them. Hopefully, I am. Um, and that's what I do in the church. I'm married to the amazing Victoria that you saw preaching last week um, on Encanto. It was an amazing message. And I have the privilege of sharing with you this morning. I just want to quickly pray while you guys get your popcorn open, get tucked in, and then I'll get into what we're going to be talking about today. Yeah, Father God, thank you so much for this privilege to speak this morning. I thank you that we can just come into your presence and we can experience you. I pray that whatever I say today is from you, that our hearts are softened to what you want each of us to receive, that it might be different for every single one of us. It might just be one small thing that is said or one, one thing you put in our minds, but I pray we are open to that, we're open to receive you, that anything that the enemy has put in place this morning that's just made us hard to you, God, is removed right now, and this is a place where we can be vulnerable, we can be open, and we can receive you. In Jesus' name, amen. So, so far in Movie March, we've had some amazing films. We have had um, Don't Look Up in the first week. I really like that film. It was a good film. We have had Encanto, which is an amazing film, a lot of good songs. However, I am here today to top all of those films by doing the best film that has ever been released. I am preaching on Shrek. <laughs> Come on. That was, that was good, guys. I like that. You're all on board. Um, I hope that most of you have seen Shrek. If you haven't, you're missing out. And I know it might seem um, a little bit biased coming from me, so I thought I would share with you some reviews of other people of the film of Shrek, just so you get an idea, if maybe you've somehow never seen this film, why it is so incredible. So the first review I want to read, 10 out of 10, masterpiece. I know, right? Okay, this, this, this person, a very obviously acquired film taste, said, masterpiece, there is nothing more to say. This film is a timeless masterpiece destined to never die. And here we are, probably about 20 years after it's released, and we're still talking about it, so maybe they were true. Um, however, as you can see coming on the screen now, I didn't want to give just one side of the argument. I wanted to give another view. So another review, one out of 10, I despise this film. Now, I think this review is a little bit harsh, but I'll read it to you for, for fairness. It says, I hate this piece of garbage film. Absolutely hate it. This gave comedy a bad name. I can't take anybody anymore. Everybody loves it, and everyone wants to watch it over and over again because they say they'll never get bored of it. This movie was corny and disgusting. Mike Myers has got to be one of the worst comedians of all time. Just to be clear, this is not my views. This is someone on the internet. Um, and I used to like Eddie Murphy back in the 80s when he was talented, but he ruined his reputation with some of his later movies. I was so angry when they came out with Shrek 2, and I found out they were making a third, and there's even a fourth now, even more. What the heck? Kill this stupid, irritating movie. Very harsh review, I know, I know. However, I thought I'd bring us back to life with my favorite review that I read, 10 out of 10, deserves to be in the best 20 movies of all time. I'm hearing a lot of you agreeing with that for sure, right? If you haven't seen this, rent it at once. Shrek is one of my all-time favorite movies. It was one of those things where I didn't want to see it, and a friend just finally sat me down and made me watch it. And then I saw it again the next day. This movie will be pulling your heartstrings, and I can't think of that many movies that I was that stunned by. Don't go in expecting another animated movie, because it isn't. Shrek is going to be a part of history. I could go into the movie about friendship, love, kindness, and vulnerability, but none will capture the essence of this enchanting treasure. The day after I unwillingly watched it, I was so blown away, I showed it to someone else who was even more anti-Shrek than I had ever been, and they loved it. Shrek is the best animated movie ever created and one of the best all-time movies ever made. Wow. So if you're not in for a treat today, this is what you're looking forward to. Shrek, a masterpiece. That's all you need to know. So I'm going to be preaching on Shrek. I'm going to play the first clip before I get into the meat of my message. So I just want to give some context for what's happening in the film at this point. We've come in quite early on. We have the main character of Shrek. He's an ogre. He's a monster. He lives in a swamp. He's pretty disgusting. We've just missed him showering and washing in mud. 
you know, and all this stuff. And he wants to be alone. He scares off the townspeople, and he's proud of the fact he's scary, and no one wants to be around him. However, another thing that's going on in the same town as him, across the way, is there's a king who wants to get rid of every fairy tale creature. So he's bringing people and saying, sell your fairy tale creatures, we'll give you money, and we will get rid of them. So we'll watch the first clip and see where we pick it up.
See, I told you you guys all love the film. It's, <laughs> it's great, isn't it? And we, so we've introduced to our two main characters that I'm going to be talking about today. We've got Shrek and Donkey. A bit convicting whether I watch whether I'm a bit more of a donkey and I'm annoying people when I'm hanging around them, or I'm Shrek and I don't want anyone near me. I'll let you decide on your own where on that scale you, you put yourself. But today's message is going to be called Jesus, our friend. I want to talk today about friendship, what that looks like, and what a friendship with Jesus might be to us. Now, to be honest, this week as I've been writing this preach, it's been a, a bit of a challenge. I've, I started with something at the start of the week, and I was like, great, this is what I'm going to talk about. This is how I'm going to use the movie, all these things. And I got to about Wednesday, and I was like, I think this is a really good message for me, but maybe only for me and not for anyone else. And I, I messaged Victoria, and I was like, okay, I think I need to change my whole preach. I was like, okay, this is going to be. And then I've had a real struggle of trying to fit in. What is it? that God wants me to say to you guys? What is it that through what I've been challenged with, to be honest, this week, and really been challenged with, and I'll share some of that with you later about how this has challenged me, what does that mean for anyone else that's listening? What might be going on in our lives as a church, our lives as individuals, with what's going on in the world, that actually God wants to speak into your lives? And that is about Jesus being our friend. And that might mean something completely different for different people. Some of you here might have been Christians for 40 years, lived your whole life in an amazing relationship with Jesus, and might be thinking, well, of course, I've heard this a million times that Jesus is my friend. Well, I, I think maybe for you guys, maybe we might have let that aspect of our relationship with Jesus slip. Maybe we've seen Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit as all these other things going on in our lives, but the aspect of friendship and what friendship truly means Maybe we're missing that aspect of our relationship with Jesus. Or maybe you're here today, it's your first time in church, you just walked off the street because you smelt the popcorn machine and you're thinking, what is this guy even talking about? Why are we watching Shrek and anything else? And I think there's a message in here for you too Amen. about actually, what, what does it mean to have a friendship with Jesus? Why would I want to have a friendship with this person that lived thousands of years ago and now we say it's alive and read about him in a book and we sing songs and we talk about him? And hopefully through some of the things I say, I'll, you'll realize the value of a friendship yeah. with that person, how that's different to any other friendship you might have had before. I want to start, though, by just justifying where th this comes from. I think if we look at the Trinity in the Bible, I'm not going to get into too much deep theology here. We see that by nature, the Trinity is relational. Yeah. We see that God, the Father, God, uh, Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit have always been connected. The three of them have always been in relationship, never out of it. And that means that when we come into relationship with any of that, it's relational too. When we meet with Jesus, he wants to be relational because that's what he knows. When we come into church and we're like, God, this is what I want today, he wants to be relational because that's in his nature. So there's this aspect of a friendship with Jesus is not a foreign, foreign thing. And although we see all the other qualities, you might see Jesus as our king, as our savior, God as our father, and all these other things you read in the Bible, you can see a million qualities, a million different ways we can have relationship with the Trinity, the one I want to talk about today is friendship, because I think it's something we can easily just let slip to the side. Oh, a friendship, that's something I have with my neighbor, something with someone I see at church on a Sunday. But I don't need to have that. So within the Trinity, there's so many characteristics. And I want to talk about friendship because I don't want it to be the one that we often overlook. I think this came to me in my thinking this week when I was watching Shrek and I saw the friendship of Shrek and Donkey developing. And I was like, reflecting on my own friendships. And to be really honest, I think lockdown, when we were stuck at home, we had restrictions keeping where we were for however many months, completely changed the way my friendships were. I think it enhanced some things. My family, I was stuck with them for months, which actually improved my relationship with them, I think. I spent more time with them than I normally would because we live far apart. My relationship that I was in with Victoria must have got better because we got engaged and married and stuff. And there was time for that to develop as you're stuck in your bubble with these same people. But actually, with my friends, I saw them way less and therefore naturally started to speak to them a bit less. They didn't know as much about what was going on in my life as they used to before. And then as we came out of those rules, out of those restrictions, I haven't, to be honest, brought it back to the place it was. I haven't been seeing my friends as much. I've not been sharing my life with them as much because I'm in a habit of what I was in before. And what that's also done is changed the way I have a friendship with Jesus. I reflected on this way I was with friends on the horizontal, the friends with people around me, friends I know. And then I reflected on my friendship with Jesus. And I, my relationship with Jesus is great. But sometimes what I think I've got to the point is where when I chat with Jesus, when I'm spending time with him, it feels a bit more like I'm having a meeting with my boss than I'm hanging out with my friend. 
It feels like, yeah, he'll tell me the things that I'm weak at. Yeah, he'll tell me what I do well at. Yeah, we can be honest and I can say, you know, how I'm feeling. But it's not like it is with a friend. It's like it is when my boss sits me down and says, Ben, you've done good at this this week. Here's some other things to do. But I don't get to know them. I've not spent time just enjoying time, having fun together. It's felt like, oh, this is what I do as a regular thing and it's really good for me. But there's not as much enjoyment. And I think it's come from the lack of friendship aspect of that. And that's really what I'll go today. Because Jesus does want to be our friend. In John 15, 15, Jesus is talking to his disciples. Um, and he says, I no longer call you servants. Because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. And if you spend any time with Jesus, any time in prayer, any time reading the Bible, you know his business. There's no, there's no hiding it. There's no agenda. It's clear. It's obvious for us. And because we know that, and because Jesus has been vulnerable and shared that with us, that means he wants to be our friend. That's not just a message for the disciples back thousands of years ago. That's a message for us today. That if you come into a relationship with Jesus, if you get close enough where he'll share his business with you, that means he wants to be your friend. And that's what we're going to go through today. How do we cultivate that friendship? How do we develop that friendship? And why should we? So we're going to watch the next clip from the film, and then we'll take it a bit further.
So Shrek and Donkey have gone on this adventure. They've, uh, they need to go and save a princess so that Shrek can get his land back, get rid of all these fairy tale creatures in the end, and have his life back to how it began. But the adventure is maybe not as simple as they might have thought when they first signed up. And it brings us great into our next point, that friendship is a journey. Friendship is not a destination that you just arrive at. You don't say, okay, great, I've decided I'm going to be friends with this person. I've decided to be friends with Jesus. Cool, tick that off, move on with life, never look at it again. It's actually the complete opposite of that. It takes time, it takes commitment, it takes effort. It doesn't always just go plain sailing. It's not simple. And it has its ups and it has its downs. And we see that in the journey with um, Shrek and Donkey. We see them that things are sometimes good. Most of the time it's not so good. Sometimes they're annoying each other. Luckily, Donkey's fairly positive and keep them going. They, they have this whole journey where you can see in the space of a minute how as a friendship, within a few days, they have so many ups and downs. And I'm sure you've experienced this with your friends yourself, that sometimes things are good, sometimes things are bad. You fall out over little things. I see it in the youth all the time. They fall out over tiny things. I'm like, you'll be fine next week. Next week, they're all best friends again. It's the way it is with friends. But it's the same when we come into friendship with Jesus. It's not straightforward. It's not always plain sailing. Sometimes it is tough. And we see a great example of Jesus and friendship in the Bible with his disciples. He has these 12 guys that he chooses, that decide and devote themselves to follow him. And we see when he first chooses them as his disciples, they're just people off the street. They're people he doesn't know. They're people he hasn't met yet. But we see as the journey goes on, if you read through the Gospels, you'll see each of those individual disciples develop a friendship with Jesus. What that does to them, how it changes them, and how that gets to. And I want to focus on one of those today to give us an example of how we can be friends with Jesus. So I want to focus on the friendship between Jesus and Peter. Peter's one of the disciples. He gets a lot of content in the gospel, so you can see a lot of his journey. And it's a great way to see how he changes and how his friendship with Jesus changes as you read through the story. When we first meet Peter, he's just a fisherman. He's just hanging out with his brother and his friends. And Jesus comes along and says, will you follow me? And he goes. But at first we see Peter. He sees Jesus, this person who's his teacher, his rabbi, someone he admires, a mentor, Someone he looks up to who can guide him, give him wisdom, who he's learning from. And those things never go away. But slowly over time, Peter starts to learn that it's not just one-sided. It's not just that Jesus does all these amazing things and I just follow him and just watch it happen and learn. That also Jesus cares for him. That it's a two-way relationship that they have. And I think Peter first realizes this. There's a, there's a healing and a miracle Jesus does where he heals Peter's mother-in-law. And I think having read the Bible this week and having read Peter's story, we start to see that realization for him that actually Jesus wants to do things for me as well. I'm not just here to learn your teachings. I'm not just here to learn from you, but I'm here to be impacted by you also. That, that goes from that place of, okay, I just am here to admire you, to learn from you, to sit and do what you want. But now I'm here to have a conversation with you. I'm here to develop. And their friendship goes on from there. It's not all plain sailing. We see when Jesus is walking on the water, Peter goes out the boat to join him. And there's a moment where he doesn't trust that Jesus will get, get him, that he can walk on the water, and he starts to drown. And like any friendship, there's moments where Peter then doubts. And that's a great example of a really short story where you see suddenly the trust is not the same as it once was, but Jesus encourages him, pulls him back up. I don't know if any of you are starting to relate to maybe this is your own journey with Jesus or your own friendship is that, you know, it's you slowly you've developed it, but there's still times and it's not as easy. Where it doesn't always go to plan. But as they journey together, the friendship develops more and it develops more. And it goes on and it goes on. And it gets to the point when they, you can tell someone's real friends. And they even mentioned uh, Donkey Made a Joke about it in the first clip when they start to be really honest with each other. When they start to tell each other how it is. When you don't hold anything back. You know someone is really your friend when they tell you how it is. They'll come to you and they'll say... You're not smelling great today. You need to go and get some deodorant. Go in the, the side and put on. That's your real friends out there. The real ones that will tell you, the way you spoke to that person today, I don't think that was what you're normally like. Is something going on. But also the ones that will encourage you, the ones that see something in you that maybe other people don't see. The ones that notice you're looking a bit down today. What's changed? I know you so well that something is different. And that's the point where Jesus got to with Peter. They got to this point where Jesus could be brutally honest with Peter for the good and the bad. He came to him and he said, actually, I want to build my whole church on you. There's going to be a time when I'm not here anymore, and they're going to start this thing with the church, and you are going to be the foundation of that. That's a massive encouragement, but real honesty from Jesus to his friend that I believe you can do this. 
but also he was honest about the things that would go wrong. He openly said to Peter, you're going to deny me three times. You have may say you know all these things, but there'll be a point when you say three times you don't even know who I am. And although Peter at the time didn't, didn't think he would, it was the honesty that he could take from Jesus. It didn't affect his love for him, but he knew as a friend he could be honest. I don't think at the start of Peter and Jesus' relationship and their friendship we would have seen that. I don't think they would have had that conversation. But over those three years they were together, over that time it developed, we see what that is. We see how it's developed. And that could be every single one of us. We can get to that point where our friendship with Jesus is so real and it's so tangible that we can just, he can be honest with us. He can tell us our strengths. He can say, you know what, you're amazing this, chase it. You're a bit discouraged today, be encouraged. Look at all these good things you've done. But also, here's your weaknesses. You know, this is something you need to work on your life. And that's what real friendship is, knowing that the love does not change. That he still loves you just as much today, tomorrow, yesterday, so the next way, next week, next month, but we'll be brutally honest. And sometimes we want our friends to tell us those things. If we don't want our friends to tell us the truth, then that's not a good place to be in. We're going to go into our third clip of the film. And in this film, we've seen Doc, uh, Donkey and Shrek. They've gone on this journey. They've gone, they've saved the princess, they've come back. But they've been hurt along the way. It's got a lot. And it's come to a point where they're really frustrated with each other but also a point where they can be really honest with how they're feeling. And like I said, that's a sign of good friendship. So let's see what happens. At the end of um, the Gospels, when we see Jesus come back to life after he's been crucified, after he's been mocked, after everything that's happened, the, um, some women find the tomb empty. And they run back and they tell the disciples, the body's gone, Jesus is not there. 
And you know, one of the first people that just sprints to that tomb, doesn't ask any questions, doesn't say, oh, this is impossible, how could this be? Why would, what's going on? Who's done something? Doesn't ask questions, just sprints straight to that tomb is Peter. Because that was his friend. That was his friend that had died. That was his friend of three years who had built so much, who was honest with each other, who had seen so much happen, that had gone. And he didn't ask any questions. He just wanted to see his friend because he loved his friend. That's the place I want us to be with Jesus. Where when something happens, when we're in doubt, when we've had a bad day, that's where we're running to. We're sprinting to our friend. When something good happens, that's where we're going. When we've had an amazing miracle happen, that's where we're going. When we've got a promotion in our job, that's where we're going. When whatever scenario happens in our life, we're running to our friend. Whether we're sharing in the morning, in the crying, in the, the dancing, the celebrating, just the menial things of our day. That's where we should be running. These are the conversations Peter and Jesus have when, when finally Jesus is risen back to life. And it's it's incredible because you can see the friendship. You can see, it's almost like the journey is complete, and now they have, they have reached the point where they're just almost best friends. And that's the place I want to be with Jesus, where he is my best friend. But it, like I said before, it didn't happen overnight. In this example, it happened over three years of every day, all day, they just spent time together. I encourage you to go read the story in the Bible. If you're sitting here and you're thinking, I, I kind of like the idea of this, but I don't really know it, or I've heard some cool examples of this, but I don't know what that real friendship with Jesus looks like, go read it in your Bible. Go read the story of Peter and Jesus, and you'll see the development. You can see the model for yourself. We see in the movie that Donkey is relentless. He's honest, and he just says it how it is to Shrek. And suddenly Shrek starts to appreciate that. Suddenly Shrek gets to the point where he's like, actually, I'm sorry I've been ignoring you for this time. Or I realize now that you actually cared for me this whole time, that you just wanted the best for me, that you were the one that makes sacrifices for me. You were the one that would be there when no one else was there. You're the one that would go through the tough times for me. You're the one that would make sacrifices for me. That's what Jesus is saying to us today. It doesn't matter if we've just forgotten about it for too long, whether we've just been missing a certain point of our relationship with him. He's still there. Jesus is relentless. He won't give up on us. He won't stop chasing us. Like I said right at the start, this message could be for any spectrum of where you're at today. And you may be, like I said at the start, your relationship with Jesus is great. You're having an amazing time. Everything is going well. But maybe you're just missing this, this friendship. For me, friendship involves fun. It involves enjoyment. It involves excitement. It involves crying together when things are tough. Maybe your time with Jesus recently has been like it was for me. Just like I'm meeting with my boss. I don't want to show too much emotion. I'm, I'll say how I'm feeling. And I'll hear some feedback on my life. And I'll meet regularly. And it will help me grow. And it will help me get better as a person. It will grow our relationship. But it's not the first person I'm going to in all scenarios. It's not the first person I'm running to. I don't want to sh just show too much. But that's what Jesus wants. He wants everything everything we have and maybe like I said again at the start this is your first time in church or you have never entered into this relationship before there's something here for you too knowing that Jesus wants to be your friend I love it I love at the start of the film in that first clip we watched when when eventually donkey is like well what's what's your name and Shrek is taken a bit aback he's like why do you want to know my name why do you no one's even asked what my name is before Sometimes we can feel a bit like that with Jesus. We can come here and be like, why would he even want to know my name? Why would he even care about who I am and all the things I've done? Why would he want to look at me after the things that I've done in my life, after the things I've said, the things I've thought? But he wants to know your name. The thing is, he already knows your name, but he wants to know you more. He wants to know about your life. He wants you to share with him. He wants you to know more intimately. He wants to be your friend. How do we do this? How do we get from where we are now to that place that Peter and Jesus were? The reality is it's going to take time. I've said it already. It's not something that happens in an instant. It's not a decision we make today that is then done. It's a decision we make today that we start the journey. It will take honesty. It will take us being honest with Jesus, 
we need to admit, like, sometimes we can be deluded and think that we've got everything together ourselves and we like to convince ourselves it's all good. Sometimes we have to be vulnerable and honest. That's why I've been with myself this week because I've been reading the Bible as I've been planning this talk and I've just thought, actually, there are some things I need to change. There's some things I need to improve. And it will then, we'll see honesty from Jesus. And we need to be able to take that, the good and the bad. You know, there's this verse in the Bible where David's saying to God, search my heart and show me what is wrong. It's a hard thing to hear. I don't know about you guys, I don't like hearing criticism. I take it really badly at first. But we need to be able to take that away and say, actually, it's got my best interests at heart. I want to grow. We will mess it up, and that's okay. We will mess up. How many times did Shrek, was he rude to Donkey? Did he say horrible things? Did he mess up? Did he do the wrong thing? Say the wrong thing at the wrong time? But friends don't give up when we mess up. Friends don't give up on us when we say the wrong thing at the wrong time or we, we're angry and we just say things in the moment. Friends don't mind when we make mistakes. And I guarantee that if you take this journey, if you decide, actually, I want to be friends with Jesus, it will be the best friendship you ever have. It will be deeper than any friendship you'd have with a person. It will be more fun than any friendship you have with a person. It will be more real. It will be more honest. And it will be the best friendship you could have. The, I walk away from here today. I'm like, what am I going to do next week? What am I going to do? I want to start doing things with Jesus that I do with my friends. You know, when I go out on a little adventure, I go explore somewhere when I'm sitting down watching a movie, when I'm just spending time relaxing, when I go for a walk in the sun, I want to be with Jesus when I do those things. When I come to church on a Sunday morning and I jump and dance with the youth and I come on a Friday night and I play ridiculous games with them, I want Jesus to be there with us because that's what I do with my friends. I don't want my friends to miss out on those fun things I'm doing. So Jesus, come with me. And then you'll start to realize a relationship with Jesus is not like meeting your boss. It's fun. It's exciting. It's enjoyable. I see the kids upstairs when they're doing, like, the JD kids in the morning. They have so much fun. They don't question, oh, what about this? What about that? What about this thing that happened in my week? They're just having fun. And they're saying, Jesus, come and have fun with us. That's what we should be like. I want, do you know what I would love? In three years, for some of us in this place to think, oh, do you know what? I have no idea what Ben actually preached about three years ago. I remember we watched Shrek in church, though. It was a bit weird. I don't know why we're watching Shrek in church. <laughs> but I decided that day that I just wanted to be friends with Jesus. And three years later, just like Peter, he's my best friend. He knows everything about my life. He's been there in the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs. And here we are today, and I have the best relationship with Jesus that I've ever had. Because, he, yes, he's my savior. Yes, he's my king. Yes, I adore him. I worship him. I love him. But he's also my friend. We also hang out together. We also spend time together just doing things we love. That's what I want for us today. I'm just going to pray for us to finish. And as I do that, I'd feel free to do whatever you want this time. I, when I preach to the youth, I always ask them to close their eyes. And I always say to them, it's not, it's not a spiritual thing that our eyes are closed. It's just that we get distracted very easily. <laughs> um, so I, and just in this moment, whatever is for you, I just want you to take a second. I don't know where you are at today. I shared where I'm at, and maybe you're in a similar place, or maybe you're a completely different place. Maybe you're actually already on this journey, and you already feel like Jesus is your friend. But I want you to take this time to say, Jesus, I want you to be my friend. I want you to do more than just everything else you are for me. I want to be, be a friend. I want to hang out with you. If you've never said yes to Jesus before, if you've never said, I just want to know you, I just want to have a relationship with you, I want you to know my name, and I want to know your name, I want to give an opportunity for that now. In this moment where we're just quiet, in, in a second, I'm going to ask people if, if you're in any of those things, if you want to say to Jesus today for the first time, I want to know you, or if you just want to say, Jesus, I want to be your friend better than ever before, in a second, I'm going to count to three and I'll ask you to raise your hand. And the only reason I'm doing that is so I can just pray for you guys. No one else can see who you are, but I can see, and I just want to pray for you, and I want to pray for you in the week because I spend my time praying because I want people to join me on this journey. And then I'll pray for us all together. So just in this moment now, if either you've never said yes to Jesus before, you've never entered that relationship or that friendship, or today you're like, I want to just, I want to take it to another level. I want to start something today that's a friendship with Jesus. If you want to raise your hands, just count to three and you raise your hands. One, two, three. 
my hand is in the air because I want to make this journey too. My hand is in the air. Thank you guys that I'm seeing raise your hands. I'm, I, I'm with you. This is a journey we're starting today where we can be friends with Jesus. We're going to hang out with him all the time and it's going to be incredible. Yeah, Father God, I thank you so much for every single person here. I thank you for you, that you who have done everything, that know everything, want to be our friend. That you want to hang out with us, you want to know us, you want to care for us. I pray for all the people that have just raised their hand, or even if they've not raised their hand, they just thought, actually, I want to start something today. I pray for all of us that this journey is not something that dwindles out next week, it's not something that we forget about tomorrow morning, but something we continue. Thank you so much that you love us, that you care for us. I pray that everyone leaves here knowing that, that you know them, that you love them, you care for them. We thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. If that was your first time today and you, you have done what to do next, we have welcome bags and Bibles and things to take away for you to take that next step. So ask at the welcome desk after the service if you need any of that, um, and we can give you the resources to take it further. Thank you, guys. Wow, thank you, Ben. Incredible message, as ever, from Ben. He's a real natural. He spends all week telling us he doesn't know what he's going to talk about, but either he delivers or God delivers. I'm sure it's God. Don't want to give Ben too much credit. (coughs) As Ben says, if you prayed that prayer of salvation for the first time, do head to the welcome desk. If you are watching online, do go to our website. There's a form you can fill in there so we can keep in touch and let you know more. So now it's time for our tithes and offerings message. This is for our regular members of the church. So if you're new or a visitor, don't worry, this is not intended for you. If you are a regular member and you're giving today, please fill out the gift aid envelopes if you can. That would be fantastic. Um, So today I want to talk about um, a couple of things um, that we'll link together. Um, So we've, as a family, been doing a devotional um, together where we listen to a um, word from the Bible. It's on our phones. We just sit and listen. Um, We do some questions together. We've been doing it before school, so we all, it takes about 10 minutes, um, and We all kind of gather together, me, my wife, my two kids, we gather on the sofa together and kind of all huddle together. It's really, really nice. And one time, um, recently, we were all kind of cuddled in all together, and I could just really sense God's presence there. I could really just sense that and just imagine what it was like, um, like Jesus sitting in the room with us, joining in the conversation, like discussing the questions with us. It was just amazing. And before I take those thoughts further, I just want to share some facts. I will come back to that in a moment. Now, I'm a man of numbers, love dealing in numbers, um, and I, in my job, I deal with some pretty big numbers every day, um, into the billions normally, so I like big numbers. So I've got some facts about the universe. So if you're not a numbers person, apologies, it's probably just going to blow, well, it blows my mind anyway. Um, so first one, um, obviously, we all think of the Earth as a pretty big place, um, and I certainly feel pretty small when I go to the top of a mountain or whatever, somewhere I can see a long way, I feel tiny. Um, so we think the Earth's big, right? Well, the sun, we know, is bigger, so it's 330,000 times bigger than the Earth. So it's absolutely enormous. I've seen pictures of, like, the sun and the Earth next to it looks like a dot. Um, If we take it further, the biggest known star is 1,700 times bigger than the sun, so it's just enormous, obviously. Um, And there's another star that burns 8.7 million times more powerfully than our sun. Absolutely huge. Now, as I'm sure you know, we're part of the Milky Way galaxy, so let's say it's even bigger. So scientists estimate that there are over 100 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy. That's not including planets, moons, everything else that's out there. 100 billion stars in the Milky Way. Um, And if we wanted to travel to the center of the Milky Way, and we traveled at the speed of light, so light goes goes pretty quick, 670 million miles an hour. So if you travel at that speed, it would take 30,000 years to get to the center of the Milky Way. And as you probably know, the Milky Way is one of just many galaxies. If you traveled at the speed of light to the nearest large galaxy, so again, if you're going 670 million miles an hour, uh, scientists reckon it would take 2.5 million years to get there. So it's pretty far, and that's to the nearest large galaxy. Now, some scientists believe there are more than 125 billion galaxies in, in the universe, and that the biggest one could have over 100 trillion stars. So hopefully I've blown your mind with some absolute enormous... I, I just cannot get my head around it. It's just ridiculous. So why am I telling you all this, other than the fact that I love numbers? Well, we've got a God that created all of that, absolutely all of it. If we come back to all those hundreds of billions, trillions of stars and galaxies, etc., etc., come right back down 
to me and my family, sat on the sofa, huddled together, like we're a total dot, like we really are um, in, in the scheme of things. Despite that, and kind of to, to Ben's point as well, which I'll come on to in a moment, God obviously cares about each and every one of us. And not only that, but he cares about every detail of our lives. So when we were sitting there listening to the devotional, he was there with us. And when we're having a good day or a bad day, he's there. He wants to be that best friend with us. He wants to share everything with us. Like Ben was saying, I think this fits really really well with what Ben was saying. So he's with us through the good and through the bad. We've got a uh, Bible verse from Matthew 6 where Jesus says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? So God's created a huge universe, but he cares about each of us and about every little bit of our lives. So I just think it makes so much sense that we give back to him what we can. He gives, them, gives us so much, and he cares about us so, so much. When I've lots, got lots on, I don't always remember the detail or I let things slip. But God's always there, always in every detail of our lives. So I just really, really encourage you to, to give back to him what you can. So I'm just going to pray for us now. Lord God, thank you for your uh, just incredible creation. I just cannot get my head around. I can't even get around the enormity of the earth, let alone the vast, vast universe beyond that you created and you hold in your hands. Thank you that despite the fact that we are so small and potentially feel so insignificant, that you, we are significant to you, that you care about every detail of our lives and that you want to be our best friend through all of it, through the good, the bad, the important things that we go through, the really immaterial things that we go through. You want to share those with us. So just thank you for that, Lord. Amen. Oh, oh, oh now, sorry. The baskets are going to be going round. And um, as I find my phone, I've got some notices as the baskets go round. So firstly, and most important, well, actually, there's four things I've got to say. Firstly, and most importantly for all of you, thank you so much to everybody that has supported and donated the Barnes Bus Fund Initiative for Ukraine. <laughs> absolutely, give yourselves a round of applause. It's absolutely fantastic to see. Um, Head to the website. There's more ways to get involved if you want to find out more about that. Um, secondly, also super important, and I would say so myself, the marriage course starts tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow evening, we're running on Monday night, starting at 7 o'clock. I'm looking to my wife, Lucy. Yes, I can't even remember the time. 7 o'clock until 9.30 each evening. There is still time to sign up, and we still have spaces. The marriage course is designed like a date night, so it's just you and your spouse spending time together, you and your partner. Um, you won't be sharing with other people, and every marriage can benefit from investment. Good, like marriages are going well, marriages aren't going so well, so I'd really encourage you to sign up if you haven't already. Also, next Monday, so a week on Monday, so in eight days' time, we have got our latest prayer meeting here in church. <laughs> 7 till 7.45. It's not a huge time commitment, but it's an amazing time to get together as a church, spend time praying and worshipping God, so please do come along to that. I really encourage you. And then finally, and not leastly, I better not say leastly or I'll get absolutely crucified afterwards, Refine for our ladies. <laughs> Next Saturday, so it's in six days' time. It's at 10.30, and I really encourage all of you ladies to come along. Every person that has been there that I speak to speaks so highly of them, so I'd really encourage you to go along. Amazing time for all. It starts at 10.30, um, but doors open at 10.15, so get there nice and early to get there for the start. So thank you. And so that's all of our announcements. If you want to know any more about them, if you marriage course, speak to me or Lucy. Um, anything else, all the marriage course, head to the welcome desk at the end. So now if you could all stand up, it is time to praise God one final time this morning. Thank you. Ben, thank you, Ben, for that amazing message. Thank you, Simon, as well. And let's end with some praise.
place I find all I need You got me dancing And in everything My heart is singing For you Coffee, nachos, hot dogs, all the good stuff. But have an amazing week.